couples in front of him, Trojan kneeling before the great doctor or the great healer. And in between them, we have the collection of the uh, uh, surgical instruments that mm -hmm. were used by the ancient Egyptians a few thousand years ago and testified to sophisticated surgeries at that time in Egypt. So this was also one of the healing centers of ancient Egypt. Would, uh, would surgeons have done the mummifications? Yes. Yeah. Of course, yes, they were like um, professional embalmers. Mm. But because their job also needed enough uh, knowledge of anatomy, the anatomy of the body, so I believe, yes, they were embalmers, surgeon, mm. surgeon no, embalmers, so, yeah. doctors, embalmers. Uh, Maybe, yani at least the first steps of the mummification maybe were done by just just workers. Mm. Uh, and you know the mummification was a very hard and complicated process mm. because the involvement of They never of cut dealing, them open, did they? They made like a little session yeah. different from one buried to another, right hand side or left hand side. It was yeah, big enough to try to take Draw everything with the, mm. the fingers, with the hand, uh -huh. with the hand. The mummification took at least seven or days, 70 days. It was a very complicated mm. process. And at least the first 30 days, uh, they spent them of removing all the soft organs from the body. Everything except the heart. The heart was left. And was it only done on, on pharaohs or? No, if you're talking about mummification, yeah. for everyone. Really? Everyone. 70 days? I must have, I, you must have a de, you know, build up of dead bodies. More or less, but also don't forget, they had the same belief. After life means your body is well preserved so that you are enabling your soul or spirit that will leave the body at death, mm. enabling the soul to find a recognizable body to do mm. in it. So if, if the body is destroyed or missing or not well preserved, so the soul will return back and won't find the recognizable body. So you believe in reincarnation? Yeah. They believe in the afterlife. Yeah. Mm. Just a second. Are you welcome? Mm. Hello. Mm. Right. And then when it come back in the afterlife, it found your old body or any body? No, your body. No, your, oh, your body. body. Yeah. But we are talking about yeah. your soul. Yeah. We'll find your body. Ah. Huh? And of course, yes, in the, in the belief of the ancient Egyptian, maybe in the old kingdom or previous times, a statue of the deceased could serve to house the soul. Mm. Mm. But of course, life like mommy was the best anyway. Mm. But what I wanted to say that <coughs> because we have professional embalmers mm. in ancient Egypt, and it occurred that every day they have one or more, they had like workshops, they had one or more dead bodies. We do believe that the first step of the mummification, which is removing all the soft organs from the body, had to be done high on the mountains outside the cities. Because of the smell. Because of the smell. Mm. Because of the smell. And it took nearly a month. Then another 20 or 30 days, uh, an attempt was made to reduce the amount of fat and water in the body, which will ensure the good preservation of the mummy in the future. And that was just enough that there was still a little bit water and fat in the body. And 30 days for removing everything, 30 days for reducing the amount of fat and water, 60 days now, two months. That was just enough that there was still a little bit fat or a little bit water in the body that will help them of positioning the arms and the legs and not to break them. Mm -hmm. yani, yani they reduced the amount as much as they could, but after 60 days there was still a little bit water mm -hmm. for positioning the arms. Mm -hmm. We're talking about kings now. Eh? and then wrapping the bodies mm. in a white linen that was soaked in oils and perfumes before, and placing the necessary amulets that needed for protecting the body in the journey, in the afterlife, and then burying the deceased. Mm. 
So 70 days altogether. Mm -hmm. As passages leading to staircases, mm -hmm. leading to the top of the temple. Straight one, just goes straight to the top. And the one at the right hand side there is, goes in a zigzag way. Mm -hmm. One ascending and one descending the top of the temple. If you want to do it, we can do it later. After we have a look at the sanctuary and some of the surrounding rooms. Hall of offerings here, mm -hmm. Hall of offerings, Hall of appearances there. Mm -hmm. You know, the golden figure of the goddess was kept inside, hidden from the eyes of all priests, but the high priest. He was the only one that could enter inside and see the statue of the goddess every day. But what about the other priests of the temple? There were so many priests doing different jobs here. Only one person was allowed to enter the sun, the high priest. But what about the other priests of the, the other different jobs? What about them? How they cannot see the statue of the goddess? So on certain times of the year, on certain days of the year, the high priest used to take the statue of the goddess out of the shrine and place it there to show it to the priest of the temple. Mm. On certain days of the year. Yeah. Was the gate to Osiris as well, eh? Osiris. Ah. And you can see the body of the God of Zeus yeah. on the modification bed and protected by the wife Isis and the sister Nephthys. Isis and Nephthys. About the God says the murderer of Osiris appeared in different forms. This is the God of Zeus again. The God of Zeus between Isis and Nephthys. And this is Horus standing over the ball or whatever. The God, the God says, appeared in over 10 different forms. Ah. 10. One of them was human figure with, with unidentified animal head, could be a donkey or could be a whatever, mm -hmm. or appeared as a bull like here, or as a crocodile, mm -hmm. as a snake, mm -hmm. huh? as a scorpion, and sometimes as a turtle. Mm -hmm. Turtle was not symbol of evil, but it was a bad omen for the pharaohs. You know, turtles, it's a fact yeah. that they live long, over 100 oh, years. Yeah. It's a bad omen. Mm -hmm. If the pharaoh saw a turtle, that means that he will die anyway before the turtle. Before. <laughs> yeah. He will die anyway before the turtle. Here you see, oh, and this is graffiti, 1877, 1878 from Maybe, uh, I don't know. And then you see, you see the god, the jackal-headed god, and then you see Horus as a falcon. And again, you see this box with the patterns, you know, that we have the geometrical pattern that we have mm. seen today in, in Abydos. Uh, you see him, Horus, is standing over the crocodile. You yeah. see the crocodile? And Horus is standing over the crocodile. This is the symbol of the god Sis, mm -hmm. but the crocodile here is also tamed. He is relaxed. Uh. Huh? You learn the lesson and then he is relaxed. Yeah. But the problem for Sis, that even if he appears sometimes as a crocodile, but when the final war between him and, and Horus that took place in Edfu, mm -hmm. Itfu is called by the ancient Egyptian the city of piercing. Piercing, piercing because he speared his uncle says there. Ah. When he he decided to go for the final battle, the final war between against Horus, says yeah, in a very stupid way, he decided to go as a hippo under the water. Mm. And it seemed that he had a problem in the water, so he lost immediately. He lost the word immediately. So, as a snake, as a turtle, as a scorpion, as a pole, as a crocodile, as a hippo, that were all the different forms of the god says. Mm -hmm. I told you about the crabs. There is mm -hmm. one there. This is the entrance. You see it like a window? Oh, yeah. This is the entrance to one of the crabs. 
Oh. And there is another, you know, different levels, I told you. Oh, yeah. In different levels. I've been one, one down on the ground. Go down. Yeah, this is one of the 12. Huh? But there are 12, yeah. and they're interested in different levels of the wolves. And one starting from the ground, and yeah. one starting from there. <coughs> Just behind this chamber, from the other side, from outside the temple, we have a relief showing a big, the big face of the goddess Hathor. For those, for the commoners, could not, who were not allowed to enter the temple, so they could walk around the temple and pray to her from outside. This is what we call it the national pity. What about the commoners who could mm. not enter the temples? So just the promotion about outside. But very important to tell you that the sanctuary here, unlike the rest of the temple, is considered as a separate construction with its own walls and its own roof. So just in case of the rest of the temple has fall down, it doesn't matter. We still have the most important part, which is the shrine or the sanctuary of the goddess. And in that side, there are two ceilings or two roofs above each other. A separate one for the shrine and one for the general, according with the general temple. This is the crypt that you are talking about. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm not sure if you want to try it. It's not no. a good idea. No. <laughs> I'm not advising you to do it. I have been down there. I have been down there. Yeah. I have been down there, yeah, before. You know, it's just a correcting, it's just really annoying. It's kind of like what we would call a priest. Priest all years ago, you know, in our times. But yeah, it's just really good. Well, as I told you, the word was used for corrupt is a curtain. Curtain. So they were hiding something. Yeah. Not, not only treasures, not only gold and silver, but could be hiding documents, mm. or scrolls, or hiding and isolating themselves. Huh? We continue with the crypts. So there are more crypts as well. Mm. There are more crypts in the temple. During the Reformation. Yeah, because most of the guidebooks, they say crypts, storage rooms. Mm. But this is not correct. They have enough storage rooms here. Yeah. And no one was allowed to enter. So we're not talking about unprotected place. Mm. They could, well, we have rooms. Maybe here, not clear in Edfu, we have the, the storage room for the silver jeweler of the god, mm. for us there. Mm. So that was treasures, tre was used as treasury. So they were not hiding treasures because these rooms were unprotected. Temples were protected, very well protected. So what they were hiding, hiding maybe themselves, they said, and documents. Because mm. knowledge was not given to anyone. Plus, yeah. mm. priests were not free to do whatever they want. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Very good sound in there, isn't it? Mm. Very soundproof. Hmm? Soundproof. Sounds no, you can't hear anything. Yeah. Yeah, you can't hear anything. Yeah. I know it's quite a solid, but. Please, just forgot that. We're celebrating the new year, first day of the year, and before mm. taking the statue of the goddess to the top of the temple. Oh. Mm. We used to carry the statue of the goddess to the top once a year to be revitalized, to recharge herself mm. after spending the whole year in the dark room here in the sanctuary. When celebrating, this it is called the New Year's Chapel, where they used to gather, reciting prayers before taking the statue of the goddess to the top. And we have a beautiful scene of the body of Lord bending and <laughs> You see, ah, you, here you can spot a little title of the goddess Nu. No, no, I'm sorry. The goddess Hathor, mm. lady of the sycamore tree. You see the sycamore, sycamore here. You see the Persia yeah. tree? Persia. Oh, you see the goddess, look. Yeah. This is the body, the solar disk. And she shines, the sun rays shining over the temple. 
This is the temple of Hathor at Debnir. طبعا ديندرا is the modern name derived from the ancient name Tentera. Tentera. Yeah. You know the walls are full of text, full of writing, like like Edfu, like Edfu. Full of text in a very rough way. I see it very rough. Just full of lots of details, lots of details. Forestier, that's a big part of our information is really about the daily rituals in the temples. Stopping here first for a shower, showering here. Ah. Taking a shower in the open air, but then we have the little screen walls uh -huh. to hide what is behind it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then continue the way visiting the false tomb of Osiris, uh -huh. and then go to the very top oh, very, uh. of the temple and leaving the statue of the goddess there for the whole day. And mm -hmm. apart from the metal ladder, but the steps, you can see the original one left, mm -hmm. left to the metal modern one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Drainage for the tree. Hmm. Drainage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Of Cleopatra that could be seen in all Egyptian yeah, yeah, yeah. the corner yeah. here, exactly Upside. from outside. Uh -huh. yeah. And in the way down, we will use the, the street steps. The street the steps. Yeah. Yeah. Just one. <laughs> you know, celebrating for Osiris, the resurrection of Osiris. If you come closer, you maybe can see how the butchers are slaughtering oh, the animals. Yeah. I'm preparing food and drinks for the feast. Mm. You see the poacher? And then they cutting the meat, offering the legs or the limbs to Osiris. Mm. So many different details you see that one. You know, so many of the Egyptian gods. I see Thoth among them, I see Sisha. I see Shu, I see Amun Ra, so many gods. I see Horus, the child between the mother and the father. Uh -huh. yeah, so many details, but the actual false tomb has two chambers. What should happen? This is the plaster copy. Plaster copy of the zodiac. Here, about you, about you, Teresa. The original is in France since 1940 something or 30 something. You see here like uh, 12 figures, four standing. Mm -hmm. And eight seated figures. It's not correct when saying the four standing that they are representing the four seasons of the year. This is not correct. Because in, because in ancient Egypt there were not four seasons, there were three seasons, four months each flood season, harvest, and dry season. In dry season, the ancient Egyptian farmer they could do farm. You know? And, the, and the, during the flood time, 
Farmers could not do any work, because no land was flooded. They could not do any work. 